question. So I got tarot, I got involved in tarot a million years ago, like in like in the 90s. And at that time, like witchcraft wasn't like as cute. Like me being like in elementary school, bringing my tarot, tarot cards to school, like it was not a cute thing. It was a weird thing. And I, I, people have told me like, oh, tarot cards are of the devil. Fun, fun fact, the number one most popular deck in the world, the Rider Waite Smith Tarot deck, which was made super popular in the, when was it? Like late 1800s, they were researching a lot of stuff and esoteric stuff. And this guy, Arthur Edward Waite, came out of this occult organization. He hired Pamela Coleman Smith to make this tarot deck. Waite is a Christian. And if you actually look through all these cards, you will notice a lot of Christian mystical symbolism. So when people say like, oh, they're of the devil, I'm like, girl, this tool has more Christian symbolism than you need to know about. <laughs> but my point is not to like push it into any one arena. My point is to say tarot is like very wide and encompasses a lot of things from Christian mysticism to Jewish mysticism to Taoism to Tantra to occultism to lots of stuff. And today people are making decks based off of everything. TV shows, pop culture, all types of things, Eastern, Western, North, South, every type of spirituality. In this class, well, it, does anyone have any like major thing they want to jump into with Tara before I start my general kind of plan? Okay. I guess one thing like I'm hoping is that maybe later on uh, is about like sort of intention with it. Yeah. Like, when, if, like, if, like, if, like I said before, conversions, like I hate when a card comes up in version. Yeah. It's like even more to remember, right? Is yeah. there a way to like sort of say as you're shuffling, like, hey, I don't want inversions? Or yeah. Is something that's like built into it automatically? Yeah, it's a very complex way to do it. It's a lot, but I'll tell you what you have to do is you have to shuffle and you have to tell it that you don't want inversions. Okay. That's all. <laughs> no, but really, I actually, that's a really good question. Um, so when I was young and I was studying the cards, I felt a similar thing. I was like, I have to memorize 78 meanings plus reversals. What I chose to do was like, I was like, screw the reversals, I'm just gonna read up right. I pers reversals are a big thing in tarot. They're a great technique to use if you use them, but you don't have to use them. What I do now is I do something called elemental dignities, which is a whole different thing where the reverse meaning comes out based on what the cards are next to it. So if the cards agree with it, if they get along, it's a good thing. If they don't get along, it's a shifted energy. But at the end of the day, tarot is what you make of it. You totally don't have to read with reversals. Um, the class that I'm teaching right now, it's a super advanced class, it's three months long, it's like a professional level course, I don't even teach reversals. Um, it's just, but you can use them. Um, cool. So I'm going to jump into the cards and I'm going to, my goal is to teach you the entire tower deck or at least give you the tools so that you can understand the meanings of all 78 cards by the time you leave this class. You think we could do How it? How long is the class? <laughs> well, it's supposed to be like an hour, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I've done it before. I've done it in like 45 minutes. I just look like a crazy person. Like I just start <laughs> talking really fast. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So this is my flagship Tarot 101 course, the fastest way to learn Tarot. And what I'm pulling from when I teach Tarot is something called Kabbalah. So has anyone ever heard of that? Yes, I've heard of it. Yeah, it's a deep system. So pretty much, with every religion, there's something called uh, an esoteric form of the religion. So if you can imagine every religion as a classroom and there's a teacher, the, ex the, the esoteric version of the religion is like the extra credit teacher's pet students of the class. There are people that like go in and like really get weird with it, like add a whole layer of meaning and they really want to become enlightened pretty much. So whether that's like in yoga, in tantra, Christian mysticism, Jewish mysticism, like it's like, Sometimes in like uh, in the East, it's like going to a monastery, for example. So Kabbalah is a mystical form of Judaism. I'm not Jewish, but like I'm, what I'm pulling from is like tarot. And it influenced tarot a lot in the late 1800s and even before then, in 1700s France. Maybe we should jump into some history real quick. So pretty much, I'm gonna give you the, the, real, the real lowdown on Law of Attraction. So it didn't start with a secret. It actually started, I actually don't know where it started. Maybe aliens, maybe Pleiadian space penguins, who knows? But there was this knowledge. It showed up in ancient Egypt. It showed up in Greece. It showed up in antiquity, two, three, four hundred CE. People started writing under the name Hermes Trismegistus, this mysterious figure who was said to come down and release all this information. Uh, in Egypt, this was considered to be Thoth. So he was the the OG law of attraction and pretty much he said the, the universe is mind and everything is mind and you are mind and we're all part of one big mind. 
And I'm not saying that you have to believe this. By the way, everything I say is a point of view. Nothing is true, but everything is permitted. So I like to play with a lot of ideas. I get involved with ideas and then I break them down and I leave them and I learn other things. So this is just what I've learned over my research. But So I have Hermes Trismegistus teaching this idea of mind is everything. Uh, what happens in history is people fetishize the past, if you haven't noticed. We love the past. We're always looking for the ancient past. So in the Renaissance, you had a bunch of guys, uh, especially in Italy, writing about this antiquity, this mysterious time, writing about Egypt and trying to figure out these ancient ideas. It meshed with alchemy and astrology and occultism and Queen Elizabeth got involved and she was like, I want to be a part of that. She hired John Dee to start talking to angels. It was this whole big deal. So some more time goes by and the same thing starts to happen in 1700s, 1800s. So 1700s France, people start talking more about what is this ancient origin mysticism, this magic, this connection to a divine authority, this big mind. Uh, they started talking about it in the late 1800s with the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. And now these people were trying to retrace the steps of the, um, of the Renaissance masters and, and uh, alchemists who were trying to retrace the steps of the uh, antiquated um, older magicians. And now, today, we have a bunch of tarot readers doing the same thing. Searching, exploring, playing with ideas, divining, all that stuff. So, my point with this is to just give you a kind of a sense of like, every so often in history, people get excited about something in the past and try to bring it up and try to research it. And there's kind of like a surge of something. So tarot is getting like a lot more popular now, witchcraft is very popular. Witchcraft, by the, a lot of witchcraft, for example, is based on rituals of the Golden Dawn, which are based on secretly rituals, I believe, of Tantra. This is my latest discovery. This is like, if you look at Tantra and Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, there's a lot of sim similarities. It's very weird. So it's like all these kind of like remixing of old ideas. So how does tarot come into play? Well, tarot showed up, our earliest records are about 500 years ago, Renaissance Italy. So there's a lot of Renaissance Christian symbolism again. Uh, with a lot of hidden things and then it goes through a lot of transformations comes through the uh, hermetic word of the golden dawn and some other things but today it's really just a map of consciousness that's how i view tarot so it's just a map of consciousness itself so whether you, you're using that for self-reflection or divination or just fun or anything it's it will work because it's like a model of the world humans we love a good model if you look up any psychologist or philosopher or whatever, there's always a model. There's always like different points or ideas or, or mythologies or archetypes. We love a map. I can't get anywhere without my Google Maps. You know, I'm bound to it. It's really sad. Um, so I just wanted to say that so that you know it can be used for so many different things. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be teaching what I find to be the most effective way to learn the tarot quickly. Because when I learned the tarot, it was all about going through every card and learning the meanings. But the meanings that they were talking about were meanings that they, they derived from somebody who derived it from somebody who derived it from somebody. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna to go to the, a little farther back to some of the core ideas of the tarot and give you that so that you can find your own meanings but you're working with the core ideas. So it's not like a superficial thing. Tarot is something you build up with inside of you because it's a reflection of you. It's your own life, it's your own consciousness. And the more you build up inside of you, the more you can use it for yourself, for other people, for whatever. Does that make sense so far? Did I lose anyone yet? Did I start speaking in tongues yet? Okay, no. cool, we're good. <laughs> so, generally my, if you, just for like historical context, what I'm looking at, I'm, I'm viewing things from a Western uh, hermetic Kabbalistic lens. So West, uh, hermetic Kabbalah, which is Kabbalah, remixed by Western magicians and stuff incorporated into tarot, but you'll see these patterns anywhere. Um, and we're gonna work a lot with numbers and elements. And if we have time, we'll get into the major arcana. Cool, so are we ready to learn tarot? Sweet. Let's do it, okay. So the idea here, this stems all the way back to Plato. So Plato had this cool idea that there was an ideal world and an actual world. The ideal world was this perfect world that everything emanates from. Emanation theory is the idea that you have something that is the original source and from that original source it makes copies and manifests into the material world. So you know like law of manifestation, you, like law of attraction, you hold something in your mind and then it appears to you materially? Well that's what the tarot is very much about but all the cards describe it in different ways. 
So the way that this, we're going to go through 1 to 10, and I'm going to tell you the meanings of the 10 numbers, and then we're going to talk about the four elements. And what happens is when you learn the four elements, and you learn the 10 numbers, 4 times 10 is four suits of 10 cards. You know half the tower deck. So instead of learning 40 cards, you're going to learn, hi, Shelly, this is my best friend. Yeah, come over here. This is my best friend, Shelly. She's a reader also, very talented, fire spinner. Yeah, totally, yeah, steal one wherever. Or you use this one. Um, so we have, the we have these 10 emanations, and you, this is Kabbalistic numerology. It's not like other numerology, just to make a note for yourself. I think it's a little better, I think it's a little deeper, but that's just my point of view. And we have the four elements here. So the whole idea here is, um, where should we start? Should we start with the four elements or the 10 numbers? What are we feeling? Elements. Elements. Let's start with the elements. Okay. So elements, I'm going to ask you, what do we know about fire? What could fire mean for everyone? Passion. What? Passion. passion. Yeah, passion. Huh? Or how? No, Ooh, interesting. Right. Okay. Is, I see there is no destruction on there. I mean, it's like there's like destruction through. It's like a tower. Right? There's like, a whole thing you can get into that. There's a whole other side of the ten numbers called the clipoth, which are like supposed to be the hellish reflections. It's kind of a newer thing. It, it hasn't existed for a long time, but that's interesting. Um, so fire is like our element. By the way, this is a is one of the names of God. God has many names. If you ever read the Bible, like. He's like serving us looks. God has so many different names in the Bible and the Torah, like all these different names and styles and, and portions. And I mean, he, he's a busy guy. He does a lot of things. He has to have, us a, have a lot of like sides of him to do all this stuff for her or them, right? Them is a big, an important word. Um, so one of the names is yod heh It's called the Holy Tetragrammaton. And uh, in Kabbalah, they took this name and they did a whole bunch of stuff with it. They create, oh my God, there's a whole book called the Sefer Yetzirah, which pretty much tells you how the whole universe was created out of... Hebrew and other stuff if you want to look into that um, but pretty much we can use this name of God and when I say God it can be anything it could be the universe source it could be you it could be you can change these words for yourself um, but we can divide this up into four elements four seasons four directions humans we like four probably because we have four limbs we also like five by the way when you get into numerology everyone tells you that so and so whatever number is like special they're all special. Don't give any one number more credit than them. They're all magical. Like 7, 8, 9, 11, all of them. But 4 is, four is a fun one. It's good for the material world because it orients us in time and space. Four limbs, we move front, back, right, left, four seasons. So in fire, we have this initiation, this uh, exciting element, uh, passion, anger, sexuality. I connect it to dopamine. In divination, it's business, leadership, feeling, passion, creativity. In, it's also the sacred masculine. In water, we have relationships, emotion, intuition, love. In a more cosmic sense, we have the, our ability to receive and our, the intuitive faculties of the mind. Um, in air, which is the combination of fire and water in the system. By the way, this isn't chemistry. This like predates chemistry. This is like the OG chemistry, like the ideas about the world, not testing the world itself. It's like the four elements within us. This isn't like you take fire and water together, but it does make steam, I guess. But So it's more archetypal. Think of it more in terms of patterns. Air is the mind, the intellectual mind, um, intellect. And it's reflected in the tarot, divinatorily speaking, as society and ambition and the ego and self and how we divide ourselves from other people. The earth element is the material world. It's earth. It's health. It's money. It's this moment right now and contains all the other elements. This fourfold division can be used for a lot of things. You can divide the entire cosmos in this fourfold division. They stand for four different worlds. They st uh, stand for four parts of the soul. And they stand for the four biggest questions people ask about in a tower reading, which is money um, and health and relationships and usually themselves. That's kind of an air thing. And fire could be business or higher purpose. It's all connected. Feeling good with the elements? Cool. Let's look into these numbers. So these numbers, um, they stem from something called the tree of life, which is, uh, remember, this is emanation theory. So as I go through these numbers, what we're looking at is we're looking at consciousness or God or the Big Bang or some underlying reality further complicate itself 
through manifestation to experience itself more and more. That's kind of the general idea of what's going on here. Again, you don't have to believe this stuff. This is just generally the vibe of, you know, Renaissance and tarot and hermeticism and where this stuff is coming from. But a lot of similar ideas you'll see in like Tantra and Eastern mysticism as well. So I do give it some credit. So the crown, number one, which is connected to the aces of the tarot, are beginnings. It's the, expo it's, it's the seed of anything, whether that's before the Big Bang or the seed of an idea or a literal seed of a plant. It's the potentiality and the infinity, the infinite potential of something to exist. So the two is force. This is the masculine side of things. This is the expansion of, of, of something. So this is the seed sprouting. It's the Big Bang itself, the expansion of the universe. It also has to do with will and choice and force. Three is actually duality, not two. And I can't get into it in the scope of this class, but three is duality pretty much because if I'm looking at you, there's one person, but it takes a third person to see two. Whoa. So that's why three is duality. And when you meditate on the stuff, when you, it, it gets really weird, but it gets very like subjective because you're working with something that is underlying reality itself. Uh, so three has to do with form, it has to do with growth, duality, and it's the feminine aspect of the universe. Four has to do with the first materialization, so things coming into matter. So four legs on a table, four elements, uh, four seasons. It has to do with security, comfort, but also rigidity. Now, when you get too comfortable, what happens? The universe says, oh, you're too comfortable, let me throw this monkey wrench in your life, and things shake get shaken up all the time. Of course, we love it. We, we totally love the challenge, right? You want things to be too easy. We do. We always manifest the challenges for ourselves. We love it, the trauma and the drama. It's good. It's part of the phantom show of time and space. Um, but five is like the, the upset, the challenges, the struggles, anything that edits us, maybe karma in a way, motion. So this material universe, five is the, uh, the change of things. Six is beauty. Six is when four and five come together to harmonize. So when we have the motion and the challenge of five with the security of four, that's the sweet spot. So six in this system is where Jesus and Buddha and Osiris hang out. It's called Club Tiferet and it exists uh, two worlds away. In, uh, well, one world away in Yetzira, but it depends on your system, on your map. It's a nice place. It's also where our higher self lives, our holy guardian angels. That's a big thing too. In occultism, everything's about finding your higher self, your holy guardian angel, like your, your purpose. So six, further manifests and in some ways loses its purity. As we go down, we're losing purity, right? Because if we're thinking about the infinite potential as God or the source or the creator, or your higher self is up here, this is when things are kind of dirty and weird. Seven is our emotions and our feelings and also our ability to endure. It is connected to the ideas of eternity, moving forward, and motility. Motility is a weird word. Motility means the ability of an organism to move on its own. So on a cosmological lens, we could look at this and say, maybe this was when the first, like, I don't know, amphibian started moving on its own and choosing where it wanted to go. So you can apply this to anything. You can apply this to a creative proj uh, project. You can apply it to, like, evolution, you could apply it to a business, you could apply, apply it to a relationship. But these are where feelings exist, emotions, uh, continuation, but it's also a little bit of an imbalance. So eight comes and is another manifestation of seven. Eight is where our intellect comes into play, which balances the seven. So seven is feelings and emotions and movement forward. Eight is intellect, logic, um, and also Sometimes it has to do with the, the ability to submit. Seven has to do with the individual as like a, an entity separate from the world. Eight is about the individual, individual uh, submitting to the world or submitting to the higher. So our two big ideas are intellect and submission. Nine is the foundation of the whole cosmos, which we can say might be the astral plane or the energy body or our dreams or the subconscious. We can map this entire thing on the human body and this would be the heart and this would be the, what's called the autonomic nervous system. What keeps us moving, digesting, breathing, all that good stuff. Subconscious nature and it's connected to uh, the moon. 
Uh, so when we look at the nine, nine is actually the completion of anything. It's the it's nine months of pregnancy. It's like the full end of something. So in the tarot, all the nines have to do with completion. Tens have to do with the excess of something. So tens are the material world. On the, on the scale of uh, the cosmos, it's the manifest material world beyond. But in terms of other systems, it's like the excess of something. So you see in all the tens of the tower, you have an excess of whatever the suit is. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take these 10 ideas and we're going to multiply them by four suits and we're going to get 40 cards. Make sense? Cool. Any questions so far? Too much information yet or not enough? Count for the other cards, does it? When there are 78 cards, You're right, it doesn't. Yeah. The majors we're going to look at separately. I'm still playing with ideas to systematize them. There are ways to systematize them, but I feel like in, it's like only of service to them to look at everyone individually. Look, they're easier anyway. Huh? Uh, major cards are easier to understand anyway. They could be, yeah. Actually, the secret is the major arcanas are the paths between these numbers. Uh, so if you look at like, I'll show you how it all works out here. So you have the 10 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and you have four suits, 40 cards. The major arcana are the paths between those cards. So when you're going between the five of cups and the six of cups, the way to get there is through the path of justice. And it makes sense because five of cups is our breakup card. It's our like t temper tantrum heartbreak card. Six of cups is like good memories and when you kind of like forgive someone, thinking about the past, how do you get through that? Through the path of justice. How justice interacts with your world and edits away what's not true for you. That's the beauty of it. And that exists for every one of these. This is some really deep stuff though. But um, we'll get to the majors uh, if we have time. We'll see how, how we flow with the minors. But let me, let me put these up so you guys so, can so see. So the majors are kind of like rigid in meaning almost. Like, and tell me if I'm wrong. Uh -huh. Like rigid in meaning where the other, all the minors are sort of like fluid with what they could mean, right? Is, is that I, would that? I would say, well, the majors are called the greater secrets. And what the majors are doing is, they're doing a lot of things, but one big thing is they're talking about a path to enlightenment. This, is n this stuff is like not as much in tarot books. You have to go to like the weird occult grimoires for this kind of stuff. Um, but it's like, they're talking about a method to become enlightened, but it's hidden because the idea in occultism is you don't want to just like be an asshole like me and shout all this stuff out on the street. It's like a, they're like kind of elitist, you know? They're like very high end. They're like, oh, you want this stuff? You got to work for it. So they like to hide stuff. Um, so that's one thing that they do. Another thing is they they are big shifts in our lives, like spiritually or big changes, and they could they could be a lot of things. Uh, the minor arcana tend to gear more towards day to day life, and the reason why that is, uh, in my eyes, is. Like you'll read in tarot books and tarot books say minor arcana is like day to day stuff. It's because we're working with the four elements and the four elements are connected to the sacred name which are connected to the manifest universe. Whereas the majors are working with all different planes in a way. And that's why when you see the magician card, you'll see him with the four elements because what is he doing? He is consciousness itself. Let's find that sneaky magician. The magician is consciousness itself beholding itself through the material world, which are the four, here's the four suits. So he's manipulating the four suits with his attention to create his own reality, which is law of attraction, the advanced version, the weird version, the symbols. Cool. That said, you can use the minors and the majors however you want. There's really no rules in tarot. You know, tarot is just a map. So however you want to play with it. but. Yeah, that could definitely be so. So, should we go through one of the suits? Which suit should we go uh, through first? What are we feeling? We do, uh, let's do, we do cups. Cups, yeah, let's do cups. I'm feeling the cups, cups too. Swords, then yeah, let's do cups first. So, I might not get through all the suits, but I'm gonna give you the tools to decipher the meanings yourself. So again, you can go and buy a tarot book, and there are amazing tarot books. Sasha Graham, who's running this event, has some amazing books out there. She's brilliant. Um, Use this information to, de to deduce your inner meanings of the cards as the core energy. Because each card has an energy, and the energy builds up, and over time it uh, accrues more and more meaning. And that's how the, divination, the divinatory meanings came to be. Um, 
But yes, so we'll start with the Ace of Cups. So what do we have? We have an Ace, which is a seed or an opportunity of a relationship, of emotion, of intuition, of love. So this could be a possibility of a new relationship. Now we can get really crazy and talk about the Mother Mary and the host and the Holy Grail and the dove and da 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 da, but we'll, we can talk about that another time. Or if you stick around, maybe we'll get into that. But boom, pull that card out, opportunity for a new relationship. Two of cups, what is the force? Two of cups, water. By the way, the suits and the, the elements, fire is wands, cups is water, swords is air, and pentacles is earth. So that's the suits. So if we have the two of cups, the force of water, or the will of water, or the will of emotion could be love, a relationship. So we have this, does that make sense? Yeah. Some of these you have to meditate with. They're very like abstract. So we have to, the wings, this has to do with an alchemical symbol of the red lion. The red lion in alchemy is nature tamed, whereas the green lion is nature untamed. The idea behind some alchemy and some modern occultism like theosophy is like nature needs humanity to tame it. Tame it. Um, it's a cool idea. I don't, know, I don't know if I agree with it all the time, but it's an idea. Maybe it means that if you enter into a relationship, you have to make compromises. Totally. Love that. That's a great meaning. The, yeah, alchemical lion, and we also have the caduceus and mercury that has to do with mercury, who's like the logos, and this is also connected to mercury because of the number two, which is a hidden connection to mercury, which is the will of the universe and the big bang, which you could say is the big bang, the will of the universe is to behold itself in love. Nice, right? See, I like to dive deep. I like, you know, it's like those pretty little, like, learn tarot today. It's like, I want to learn about the universe. Like, I want to figure it all right now. Okay, so three of cups, we have form, and we have the idea of the feminine connected with the, with the suit of cups and water, which is emotions. So here we have the idea of understanding, and understanding each other, intuition, groups of people. Um, yeah, very feminine card, like girls' night out, it could be a, a woman's intuition, it could be, um, we also have hints of, uh, the idea here is like form, the manifest world in enjoyment of it because the the suit of cups is all about desire remember suit of cups is also desire it's emotions it's feelings it's relationships it's love so it's all about getting our wish granted does that make sense how that I kind of vibe? there's fruits in the picture does that mean fertility definitely does you know what the actual esoteric card uh, title of the card is lord of abundance and the fertility idea comes from its astrological attribution of cancer cancer is the mom of the zodiac in her second deacon Mercury visits her and what is Mercury? Mercury's trade, Mercury is like language, communication, so it has to do with good commerce, good business, good stuff happening, wealth, growth. Cancer's the mom, it's like hosting Mercury and they have a great, great old, grand old time. It's also the three fates and it's also um, connected to Persephone, which is a whole other thing, but yeah, totally, fertility. Uh, four of cups, so four of cups, number four is rigidity, right? Security, comfort, when we get too comfortable with our emotions we get kind of bored so this is like being a little bored or like you know like after like the NRE the new relationship energy dies it's like okay yeah Netflix and chill vibes so what is the quiet cloud offering up like is that like saying like hey you're too comfortable it's time to look for something else love that totally absolutely it could definitely be saying that it could be something he's thinking about uh, this is called the lord of blended pleasure so it's about like being too comfortable but not really doing anything about it but maybe wanting something else it's also called the Lord of Luxury. This could be the Ace of Cups. He's forgotten the initial beauty of the Ace of Cups and the energy has uh, lost its purity. And he's now looking at these three cups like, I don't know what, what to do. Uh, there's also Buddha under the Bodhi tree asking, what is my purpose? What's the T? Not being satisfied with the world. So lots of stuff in the Four of Cups. Five of Cups. Fives are challenges. Uh, disruptions the disruption of the world of cups is of the world of emotion this is loss this is grief this is a breakup card exactly so. totally the, the two can lead to a bridge which leads to this thing and we could look at these as water wine milk what are the what are the things water wine milk and blood are like the four symbols that are for a couple different things um, Jesus did a lot of cool things from that. I hear I wasn't there personally. Six of Cups. 
the harmony of the uh, the suit of cups. I'm gonna just fix that sign. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. So this is the harmony of the the suit of cups. Easier times, easier days, uh, memories of the past. So we have the beauty, the six of of water. Does that make sense? So it could be the past, could be this is a big dating card. It's the beginning of a wish. Um, this is childhood, memories of the past, good stuff. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. See, hidden little Christian things. Like uh, we have this like uh, Andrew's cross over here. Seven of Cups. So we have when we get the number seven, which is feelings, right? Number seven it has to do with feelings and emotion and motility, combined with the idea of water, which is emotions. We have too much emotion, too much feeling. We're in our head. We desire too much. It's desire nature's all that good stuff. Make sense? Kind of, does everyone kind of see how that kind of connects? This is also like if you look at uh, the individual, the desire factor, because sevens have to do with desire, so do cups have to do with desire. So we have extra desire nature, he wants it all. Maybe he can't decide. So eight of cups, remember eight of cups has to do with submission. He's submitting to a higher purpose, he's leaving behind the cups. Eight is also the intellect. The intellect is leading him away from what he wants emotionally. Some of these things are hidden. You kind of have to look through the image. So again, this course is going to set you on your tarot journey. So when you go to the video, go back, listen to everything, and then take, it, take time to study the, the number, the element, and like explore the card. And actually, if you really explore the card, if you like meditate it, like go in the image, that's called path working. It's like one of the things that um, like they would have people do in like occult organizations and like Golden Dawn, like you'd have to path work through the cards and like learn things, your subconscious would show you things. Nine of Cups, Lord of Happiness, the fulfillment, the final moment of the cups, the end of the cup, the full culmination, you get what you want. But what's under those curtains, right? Um, cool. Now when we have the excess of something, what happens? Well, in this occult tradition, when you have the excess of something, and just in a way like you have something that like bears fruit, the fruit eventually gets so heavy it falls to the ground and it plants itself and becomes another tree or whatever. Um, I'm not really good with this material world because I hang out with the Pleiadian space penguins, so I'm still learning about this world, but that happens, right? The seed comes down, it goes into the ground, and it like shoots up in a new organism. So that's the same thing that happens in all the tens. So the tens are the excess of the suit. So when we have the excess of water, the excess of desire, emotion, relationship, what happens? We give birth to children, whether that's blood family or chosen family, or we choose a wider family, the love overflows. And those two are the secrets of the ace. Well, it might be dripping. They were working on some stuff early. I think it's dripping. Cool. So does that make sense? It's like the the overflow of the element into other worlds or other people's worlds. Childbirth, family, expansion, happily ever after. Cool. So let me see what time do we have now? Does anyone know what time it is? 7.41. 7.41. Okay. We should probably jump into the court cards, uh, which are not that hard when I explain it in this way. And then if we have time, we'll jump into the majors. So you can do that for every suit. Combine the meaning of the number, meaning of the element. You'll get a general idea. From that general idea, start to study the picture. One thing to keep in mind, this deck is called an ex exoteric tarot. So this deck is meant for divination. So it's not like the, the, the tar it's kind of like, it's kind of like the user-friendly upfront version of the tower that exists behind it, which is like the manual version. So all these images are only examples of what the actual card could be. So the 10 of cups is more than a happy family, but this is an example of what the 10 of cups could mean, which is great for divination. Cool, so let's go into some court cards. So the idea behind the court cards is we're taking the four elements. We have our four suits, right? We have four offices in the court cards. We have a king, we have a queen, we have a knight, and we have a page in the system. Each of those offices are an element in themselves. So the kings are air, the queens are water, the knights are fire, and the pages are earth. So now all you have to do is when you know that, and I should have written it here. Uh, do, do I have it here? No, I don't have it here. Um, do I? No. So, 
this is the um, Kings. This. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Knights. There. Oh, I do have it. I have it written down. Oh, Knights here. Knights, Queens, Kings. There's another system which which switches it, which goes into a crazy thing. But yeah. So we have Knights as fire, Queens as water, uh, Kings as air, and uh, Pages as earth. So all we do is take that idea of the office and multiply it by the element. So let's look at this. So we have King of Wands, which is King, he's air, Wands, he's fire. What is air applied to fire? It's the intellect applied to creativity or passion. So this is someone who's taking their intellect and applying it to their passion. What could that be? It could be a business owner, it could be an entrepreneur, it could be a CEO, it could be any of that. So um, Queen of Wands, we have water applied to fire. Water is intuition, feeling. This is someone who really connects to their intuition, their feeling, their feminine side, but is also really passionate and really fiery. This could be, um, I don't know, Beyonce. I always see her as a pop star. This is like the uh, Lady Gaga, I don't know. Um, I love Lady Gaga. Um, free Britney, it's time. Um, so this could be like, yeah, intuitive plus fire. This could be a businesswoman. Um, also the Witch of the Tarot, because like we have a cat, lots of Aries energy here. So Knight of Fire, Double Fire, never trust them. They're always on their way out. No, they're just crazy, very impulsive, stunt double vibes. Double Dose of Fire, they're always moving forward, very explosive. Anger is a big thing, they're Sagittarius energy. Um, passion, a lot of exciting stuff. Page of Wands, Earth of Fire. So the idea with the pages is, is they're kind of like, they're the grounding forces of the elements. So a Page of Wands is... We can look at pages as uh, people that study something, or young people, or their apprentices, or they might be delivering messages. So he's studying fire. He's studying one of his passions, or his business, or studying some, some creative art, maybe. A wannabe. A wannabe, totally a wannabe. Hey, we all start with the pages. We've all been a page one day. They actually govern material space in, in the tarot, like astrologically, they govern parts of the world. It's very interesting. Uh, King of Cups, air and water together. Air applied to water, so we have the intellect applied to emotions. What's that? That could be art, philosophy, um, great works of art, thinking, feeling, poetry. He's a happy family guy. So kings are like the decision makers. They're like, but they're not, the, they don't necessarily take the action, they make the choices. So this could be like the godfather or something, big family energy. Um, make sense on King? So Queen of Cups, double water, the most intuitive of all the court cards. So she's a healer, she's an empath, she's the deep ocean, she's cancer energy. Double dose of water, lots of depth here. She has connections to the priestess and the star and all that good stuff. Knight of Cups, our favorite fuckboy, fire and water. They come on strong, but they don't stick around. No, the Knight of Cups is fun. They're like, so fire, the passion of emotion, people that like, jump into, you know, this could be artistic people, this could be like romantic, hopeless romantic, some knight in shining armor vibes. There's a secret connection to the death card you'll notice image-wise, that connects him to Scorpio, which, yeah, he's either Scorpio or Pisces depending on your system. I see him as Pisces because I see him as fire, but yeah, it depends. What do you mean? Like, what comes first? Like, clean of wands, and how is that different from, like, night of cups? So, um, the way this is divided up is we have the sacred name, which is multiplied by itself to create 16 ideas, pretty much. Uh, the 16 ideas are the four elements in their sub-element. So you would start with fire, air, wa fire, water, air, earth. There's a little bit of a blind. I think in the Renaissance it was fire, air, water, earth, which actually, which actually makes more sense because our minds, the thought happens first, which triggers memorized emotion in the body, the emotion, and then the physical action of the body, but that's a whole other thing. But so, yeah, you would go, you would really go Knight of Wands, Queen of Wands, Prince of Wands, and then Princess of Wands. That's the, the system that underlies this system. But weight changed things up a little bit to make it kind of more in line with uh, like a family system, I kind of see, or like a more medieval system. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, I just like wanted to see what like interpretation you take of like the same element and the, the seven which one? I think the sign takes uh -huh. place. I don't know if I'm like. Oh, all, all the. Knight of Cups and like, Queen of Wands. Yeah, yeah. Because there's seven elements in the same 
cards. Yes, exactly. Same elements in the same cards. Oh, what comes first? Oh, yes. okay. So what I would say, it's kind of like this. Um, the four, so the four um, cups offices, they are actually all exist in the Ace of Cups. So we have the Ace of Cups, which is here. Within the Ace of Cups, we have the four court cards. And in a way, within the four court cards, we have the 10 uh, numbered cards. So they all exist in the Ace. And then their, their office element is their sub-element. So I would say what comes first is the suit. So he's primarily water, but water in its style of fire. Okay, okay. So you would, I would say a fiery type of water, which in this tradition, in the esoteric tarot, would be, um, would be called Lord of the Waves and the Waters. So they say, how is fi water fiery? Well, there's waves, there's rain, like anything that's intense or like... Yeah, so I would say he's water, fire style. Okay, that makes sense. I was just trying to see what... Yeah. I didn't understand the structure of it, but that would be perfect. Totally, yeah. Because yeah. they all live in the Ace of Cups, so they're all right. primarily water. So the Page of Cups is like water, earth style. Now, if you really want to go down the wormhole, you could study... There's all these qualities of hot, dry, wet... Uh, hot, cold, wet, and dry, which comes out of like ancient Greek philosophy. And you can apply all those qualities to the elements, which give the, these more characteristics. But again, this is just more wormholes for you to discover um, if you want. So Page of Cups is earth and water together. So he's like learning about emotions and feelings in the inner world. I always see him as like a, that sensitive child. Like, you know, not the one that like went and did sports, but like the sensitive one that needed time alone to like feel things. Like, I, don't, I forgot, I saw a funny skit about that. And I was like, oh my God, it's me. <laughs> okay, so King of Swords, double air. The judge, big judge energy, big Aquarius energy, very intellectual, exists very much in theory. Anyone in theory, like philosophers, could be scientists, could be any of that, could be lawyers, but I see Knight of Swords a little bit more as lawyers. Queen of Swords, water and air together. So we have air in its uh, water drag, so to speak. So we have air, which is the mind, but showing up as water, which is intuitive and flowy. So we have intuition and intellection coming together. She's tough. She's very poised, very together, very balanced. Um, yeah, she's the widow of the cards, so to speak. Because swords are violent and swords have to do with society and death and ego. Could be somebody who hides their emotion? Could be someone who hides their emotion. Yeah, they are. They could be very cold, yeah. But they have it. They know how to use it, too. Knight of Swords, Fire of Water. This is assertive energy, bully energy. This could be like... Good speakers, good talkers, very fast ideas, rushing into something, um, lawyers, page of swords, uh, earth and air together. So when I get earth and air, I see the material world and the intellectual world of ideals and ethics. This is social justice warrior energy. She's tough. She's connected to Medusa. Um, she's also studying something intellectual. She's very curious, very sneaky. So the earth, we have the air as a king applied to earth. So earth, money, in its style of, of air. And you know, one thing I've been thinking about, like this country, the US, it's like so much of this economy exists in abstraction, like in the city, like everyone is in a cubicle playing with abstraction, but you never see, or you rarely see someone literally making something, right? It's all like, how much business is abstraction? CEO energy. Everything is ideas and language and marketing and blah, blah, blah. Just, a, just an interesting thought. Um, queen of uh, Pentacles, we have the queen, which is water, the watery side of earth. So water is emotions, intuition, and earth is money and material world, the intuitive nature of the, of the earth itself. And what is that intuitive nature? It's frolicking, it's, there's a bunny here, it's fertility, it's health, it's all these things. See how you could really dive into the card and, and deduce why things are, here, are the way they are? So now we have a night, we have the fiery aspect of Earth. This is our workhorse. This is our Virgo energy, always busy. Like he's the only knight that's not like going somewhere. He's stationed. And he's also in some decks, he's like a farmer. So he's not fighting, he's not delivering, he's working. Um, and then we have double earth here in the Page of Pentacles. The best student you could ever imagine. Very grounded, studying something, very involved with something. Um, it's all good stuff. So it's double earth. There's something magical that happens in this card too. There's something called a reintegration. So remember in the tens, there was an overflow. And when there's an overflow, that energy flows into something else to recreate a journey and to start a new journey. Same thing happens on the, the page of pentacles. They don't tell you this in the intro books. They should, because now when you know that, you know that this page of pentacles leads up into 
the Knight of Wands to start the whole thing over again. Um, so, so there's three cycles that happen in the tarot. There's three flowing loops. There's the court cards, uh, numbered cards, and then there's the major arcana cards. Cool. Any questions so far? So we keep going? Keep going through the whole deck? Any questions so far? Let's do it. Let's go through the full. So the full is... Uh, so do you guys want to hear divinatory meanings or like occult significance? Divinatory. I know that's leap of faith. Leap of faith. Love it. Okay, we'll do divinatory. Start, start a journey, right? Okay, yeah. Well, I'll go through the divinatory meanings. If you want to stick around for occult stuff, we can do that later. So yeah, start of a journey, a leap of faith, jumping into something too. There's also the Big Bang. Um, yeah, totally new, new incarnation, jumping into something new. But it is also folly because spirituality and folly are not so far apart, or, or like insanity, there's been connections to that. Magician card, con uh, a consciousness itself, talent, ability, skill, focus, the ability of the intellect to focus, to speak. Hyper uh, consciousness, subconsciousness, intuition, psychic ability, initiation, esoteric secrets. High priestess. High priestess. Um, well, B and J stand for, <laughs> no, they actually stand for, um, uh, ja Yachin and Boaz, I think Yachin and Boaz, which are two um, pillars of Solomon in Solomon's temple from the Torah. So she's like standing at the threshold of Solomon's temple of all the esoteric secrets. And have you ever heard of the idea like, we're all w drops of water returning to the vast ocean of consciousness? Have you ever heard that yeah, idea? I heard that one. Well, if you look behind her veil, there's a vast ocean. And that vast ocean is the collective unconsciousness of everything from which everything came. Remember how we started on the whole LOA, Law of Attraction, con Big Mind thing? So Empress, baby making, love. This is uh, Aphrodite and Venus and the, the material earth itself, or at least the ability of the material world to happen. The fertility on any scale. This is that fertility organizing itself in a separate unit of consciousness. The interpretations I've read of the Empress say that she's pregnant, but I guess in the Victorian age they tried to disguise it. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, she's definitely pregnant. I mean, she is like the cosmic gateway of everything. So I, I definitely see that. Um, emperor, ego, rule. Um, this could be a relationship with mom and what's called the bio survivor, survival circuit, which is our relationship with sustenance with mom. This could be a relationship with dad, which is the territorial survival circuit, which is like uh, our ego, development of the ego. Uh, rule, law, all that good stuff. Hierophant, anything that is a tool for spirituality that connects you with the higher. So a lot of tarot readers don't like the hierophant because of their feelings about what the hierophant represents as maybe the pope or whatever. And hierophant could be the tarot itself is a hierophant, you know, any deliverer of information. The lovers, love, but also choice, but also separation, multiplicity. Those are three very distinct meanings that can go into a lot of areas. Um, very deep card. It has to. It's the whole creation process. You know whether you're looking at it like through the through Genesis or not Genesis. There's a lot of deep stuff here. Chariot card. All of that that I just t told you coming together resulting in the chariot card. There's little symbols of all the other cards. This is conquest and being in alignment with yourself and moving forward and all that good stuff. Strength card, harnessing your inner energy, harnessing your creativity, your animal nature, self-control, channeling. The hermit card, time alone, but also very, very deep card, one of the deepest cards. Has to do with the, one of the forms of God. But yeah, alone time, doing your own thing, asceticism, enlightenment. The Wheel of Fortune, the material world in its representation as continuous change. Could also be luck, expansion, cycles, ups and downs, lots of deep stuff here. Uh, if you ever read the, the Bhagavad Gita, have this card as a bookmark and you can see little connections between what the Gita is talking about and the tower. Hi, I can get you a seat if you want to sit down. Yeah, yeah, pull up a seat. We're just going through the majors now. Um, we're going through divinatory meanings with a small side of esoteric uh, spice. Uh, justice card. So this, this is my karma card, and that has to do with its connections to Libra and its Hebrew connections. But this is justice. Um, could be inner justice, justice of the world, law, editing, any types of editing. Remember before how I said when we were looking at the Tree of Life, when you have that breakup of the Five of Cups or something doesn't work out, and you want to get to the Six of Cups, which is a more fun card, you take the Path of Justice. 
So justice is here, that's this path. So what does justice do? It kind of sets us straight, it balances us. It shows us the consequences of our actions so we can learn. And that's like the, one of the deeper meanings of justice. Um, it's also the whole Newtonian universe in its act to constantly act and react like billiard balls. Um, Hanged Man, initiation, new perspectives. This is a big, deep card. If you study this card with the Empress in the, in the World card, there's a lot of hidden connections there. So the Hanged Man is initiation, a surrender, surrender to the higher mind, um, or just being stuck. Uh, death card. Um, my thing with death card is like, you know, people say like, oh, we need a card that's, they, they say of the death card, like, it's rebirth. And I'm like, I'm about that, but like every card is rebirth. Like every single card in the tarot is change. So can we just have one card that's like not the fun sides of rebirth? So to me, death is the shitty ass part of change. It sucks. The change that we don't want. That we're eventually grateful for on the other side, but like, yeah, it's a loss. Um, I mean, yeah, we have the sun rising up. We have the towers of the moon in the back. We have like the white uh, rose and there's a lot of good stuff, but it's a loss. Um, So to me, the tower is talking about, on the esoteric scale, it's talking about something that's larger. Like it's talking about a level of enlightenment, whereas death is talking about like a little bit more common. Like this is the, so this is in the second row. It has to do with like normal death or like in the tower is like more of a spiritual enlightenment or a death of an entire reality, so to speak. But it could be whatever you want. It could be maybe tower is like death on fast forward if you want it to be. Um, I mean, there's some things, uh, yeah, there, and there's some stuff on the tree of life too, but, um, but that's kind of how I view it generally. Um, the tower, tower card is also connected to the lovers and you'll also see that, that the, the people on the tower card in the nine and 10 of swords. So the woman in the nine and the man in the 10 of swords. Uh, but yeah, death card is like a loss of something. It doesn't have to be all trauma and drama. Uh, it doesn't have to be physical death. It could be a death of anything. I would say physical death for me if you're if you use that in your tower practice is more ten of swords, but um, it's up to you. So temperance is the recovery from death, bringing things together, alchemy. Very simple, two opposite things, bringing them together. So whereas death, we're separating things apart, things are getting like kind of dissolved. This is bringing it all back together. Big healing card, lots of good stuff here. Uh, devil card, the material universe, simply put. Whatever your relationship with the material universe is, whether it's unbalanced with addiction or if it's harmonious, it is, yeah. Compare this to the lover's card. Um, there's a lot of good stuff here, interesting stuff here. Um, this comes from an image called Baphomet, which is a synthetic deity. What, what I mean by synthetic is history suggests or people have suggested that Baphomet was created like kind of for shits and giggles, but like, if you ever see Baphomet, he's a guy that does this a lot. Um, they, they say that the Catholic Church invented Baphomet to blame the Knights Templar for worshiping an idol. Who knows? Maybe he's done from something else. Um, I think he's like a Western yin yang. That's a whole other thing. Anyway, the tower card. So yeah, this was all of a sudden a, a destruction of everything you thought was important or normal or real. Um, Totally could be getting fired, yeah. And that's a really good one because Tower does connect to the material world a lot with its, with its association with Mars. So yeah, this is big, yep, falling, chaos, um, lots, of, lots of stuff here. Um, the star is the recovery from that, which, so, so the idea here is this is like when everything dissolves into chaos, the star is the divinity of that chaos to be the potential for everything. So the star is not any one star, it's the whole starry sky. It's space itself. Space itself to happen and expand as a universe and coagulate in different forms to create solar systems and whatnot. It all comes from the star. Lots of goddesses attributed to this card. Um, lots of deep stuff. This is also your vision, a new hope for yourself, a new identity. Um, yeah, seven chakras, there's a bunch of stuff. The moon card is the subconscious nature or the unconscious nature. Uh, so here's a really fun mystery that I don't see a lot in tarot books. This entire image is an illustration of the evolutionary process based on what was known at the time of the creation of this deck, kind of. So the idea is we have the collective unconscious from there arises like amphibians and all these weird creatures from there arises a wolf. Over here, the wolf is domesticated into a dog and then humanity eventually builds structures and keeps moving forward. So it's like our evolutionary path 
as it exists in the cerebellum specifically, and that's connected cabalistically. So this is the back of the head, all the unconscious shit. So this could also be psychic ability, mystery, fear, not knowing what's next, having to use your intuition. Um, compare it to the priestess card. This is a good study exercise. The sun, the sun is our consciousness. This is like vitality, all good things. This is the S-O-N and the S-U-N. Fun stuff, we have Aben. So uh, stone in Hebrew, I believe is Aben. And Ab, I think is son or father and Ben is the other one. So when you combine father and son, you get stone. And there's a little hint at father and son, whether you take that uh, from a Jewish lens, a Christian lens, whatever. Um, that's a big idea here. Spontaneity, success, life, liberty, happiness. Lots of good stuff here. The natural, uh, radi the radiating and uh, vibratory qualities of the universe in the sun. Judgment. Okay, so the idea here is this is the last, this is awakening, any kind of spiritual awakening or personal awakening. Uh, it's, the idea here is it's the last possible moment before you are reabsorbed into the higher mind that we were talking about when we were talking about like hermeticism and all that old spiritual stuff. Um, yeah, this is uh, the last judgment biblically. Um, it's, it's actually a very fiery card. And then the world, which is the universe fully manifested or fully reabsorbed back into itself. So this is the fulfillment of any endeavor, the co ultimate completion. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Lots of stuff here. I'm like, I don't want to talk about any one thing because then I'll keep talking forever. Okay, so now you have all the majors. You have all the tools that you need to find the meanings of all the minors. And if you do this, you'll have an entire notebook of the entire tarot deck. And all those meanings will come from abstract ideas that interact with your subconscious, connecting to your awareness. And you'll have your whole personal tarot deck. You can start reading whenever. Cool. Any questions?